My house is inundated with Snap-on and S2000 parts. So everybody always calls me, you're like, hey, you have this part? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I've been collecting Snap-on tools since I was probably 16. And so basically for the last 20 years I've been collecting Snap-on tools. So. And it's funny, you, know, you work on a, you know, a Honda S2000 and you're, 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 you really know what sizes you need. You need a 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, and probably with those four socks I could disassemble the whole car. But you know, when you're working on an M3, you're, you're using the 13, 16, 18, Torx. and the Torx, you're like, oh, you bastard. <laughs> So we're gonna put on the lift right now. You know, you know, every house needs a lift. So I bought a S2000 main like four years ago. And um, I was like, oh, you know, it's okay car. I started, actually, you know what's funny is I hated the car. Did you really? Yeah, I thought it was the biggest piece of junk in the world. And I'm like, wow, this car sucks because in order for me to make it go, I have to rev it to 9,000 RPM every single time. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work. Had you been a torque guy before? Or what? No, I wasn't. But, you know, back then, you know, everybody's like, oh, the S2000 is such a great car, you know, you need to own one, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll buy one. I bought one. I was like, what a piece of junk. And then the day I realized it was an amazing vehicle was when I took it to streets and it was actually snowing at streets. Seriously? Yeah, it was actually wow. snowing at streets. And I took it on the track and I'm like, wow, this car is amazing. And from that day forward, I've been buying S2000. So here we go. What's the trick on this? What are we gonna do? Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I think one, two, three, four, five bolts. Oh no, six. Six bolts to remove the shock out of this vehicle. So we're gonna be removing the upper A-arm. There's two bolts on each side, 17 millimeter bolts. And then one 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom that's holding the shock to the lower A arm. Uh, one bolt that's holding the stainless steel brake line onto the shock, and then the two bolts on top, and that's it. It pops right out. Wow. So right now you're, you're loosening the bolts and actually connect the top A arm to the chassis. That's correct. Um, I'm just loosening the bolts. I already took one of them out because I was just worried that I was going to hit the inner fender liner, but I'm just going to loosen this one to the point where it's almost out and then just take out all the other bolts before the shock will come out. Yeah, you know, it'll probably take, you know, not too long, five minutes to get these, get the shock out. Taking out the stainless steel braided line attachment point on the shock. So now you're doing the bolt at the bottom of the... Yes, I'm actually removing the lower shock bolt that holds the shock to the lower arm or connects the shock to the lower arm. And once that is out, I could remove the two 14 millimeter nut on top. Leave that up there. So I'm just gonna loosen this guy up. It's already loose, but just need to take it out. There we go. And the okay, suspension is gonna come out, and that's it. Uh, there you go. Yeah, fairly simple, fairly pretty much with you know two sockets and a wrench, I was able to remove the whole suspension. Like I said, four four sockets and you could disassemble the whole car. <laughs> yeah, and see notice on on the shock, on the stock shock, this 12 millimeter nuts welded on the back side, sorry, M8 is welded on the back side and on the new KW piece, it's actually vacant. Okay. So I just need to get a little 12 millimeter nut and that'll work. So KW also gives you two new top bolts. You cannot use the factory top bolts because they're actually different thread pitches. Right. So it comes with two new bolts and two new flat washers. So just remove those. And these shocks are actually the club sport version which is different from the V3 because it comes with the new top hats. Mm -hmm. I've used um, pretty much quite a few suspension systems on the, on the market and I think personally, I think that KW rides the best as far as street driving. It, it actually, I think, rides better than stock, which is pretty scary. <laughs> and, That's and something it. I hear constantly yeah. and it sounds too... It's too good to be true, yeah, but... Really? 
right? Yeah, it almost sounds too good to be true, but it is. It, it just rides impeccably well. It's, it's incredible. So we're gonna push the shock through and put the two bolts on top with the washer, just so it holds it in place. And we'll come back to this later to tighten them down. So we're gonna lift the suspension up a little bit and put the shock bolts on the bottom through. It's, good. it's providing some resistance because of the fact that it's still connected to the sway bar and the, the other side is actually pushing it down. So, but it's not that heavy, so not too bad. There you go. Wow, that's an awfully long bolt. And then we're gonna use that 12 millimeter nut on the back side of the uh, brake, line. brake line bolt. Oh, where did that bolt go? Dropped it. So we're just gonna put the two 17 millimeter bolts back on the top. Just hand thread them a little bit. Same with this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten the upper arm first. So there's no real sequence as far as what to tighten first, but it's like you do this. And if you're gonna be road racing the vehicle, I would highly recommend putting maybe a dab of Loctite on the thread just so it doesn't back out. I have KW suspension on this S2000, another S2000, on my Evil 9, my brother's <laughs> Evil 10, and I've converted pretty much every single one of my friends who race at the track to buying KWs. It's, it's honestly probably the best, the best suspension for the price on the street. <laughs>